R. Kelly is a singer, songwriter, and producer who sold almost 80 million records. He was the best-selling R&B artist in the 90s and early 2000s. Unlike most singers, R. Kelly write his own songs. That's one of the reasons he's considered the king of R&B. For three decades, this man blessed our ears with some incredible music, gave us countless of classic songs. This documentary can put you all in R. Kelly's shoes. With that being said, let's go. This is his story. Robert Sylvester Kelly was born on January the 8th, 1967, in the south side of Chicago. His mother, Joanne, was a school teacher, and his father wasn't around. Joanne would later get married to a guy who reportedly worked for an airline. Robert has two brothers and three sisters. The family grew up in the Ida B. Wells projects. Robert was a very shy child. He spent most of his time at home playing on his keyboard. At the age eight, Robert began singing in the church choir. At home, Robert was allegedly being sexually abused by his older sister, Teresa. He was also being sexually abused by an older male who was friends with the family. At school, people teased Robert because he couldn't read or write. He would go home, lock himself in the bathroom and cry. At the age 11, Robert allegedly shot himself in the shoulder attempting to commit suicide. It was a very dark time for him. Growing up in Chicago was rough. The gang activity was just as heavy as it is today. Robert's two brothers was with the foolishness. They both ran the streets and made names for themselves. Robert attended Kenwood Academy High School. There he played on the basketball team and was said to be a good player. He even played ball with former number one high school player in America, Ben Wilson. While attending Kenwood Academy, Robert met legendary music teacher, Lena McLean. McLean seen the talent in Robert. She encouraged him to quit the basketball team and focus on singing. She also encouraged him to enter the school's talent show. At the talent show, Robert performed Stevie Wonder's classic song, Ribbon in the Sky, and won first prize. He dropped out of school shortly after and began musking in the subway under the Chicago L tracks. On November 20th, 1984, high school basketball star Ben Wilson was shot and killed. Wilson had a bright future. He had scholarship offers from the University of Illinois, DePaul University, and Indiana University. At Wilson's funeral, a 17-year-old Robert sang, it's so hard to say goodbye to yesterday. Robert always had a unique voice. It's bright but powerful, similar to Marvin Gaye's. In the beginning, Robert's style was inspired by Bobby Brown, New Edition, and BBD. This was in the beginning of the new Jack Swing era. A 20-year-old Robert was ready to get in the game. In 1989, Robert helped form a group by the name of MGM, along with his high school friends, Mark McWilliams, Vincent Walker, and Sean Brooks. The group later signed a deal with the independent record label and released only one song, Why You Wanna Play Me. On the talent TV show, Big Break, hosted by Natalie Cole, MGM performed All My Love and won a $100,000 grand prize. Months later, MGM breaks up and Robert signs to Jive Records and record his debut album, Born Into the 90s. The album was released in 1992 
and credited as R. Kelly in public announcement. This was all during the New Jack Swing era. She Got That Vibe was R. Kelly's first hit. The song peaked at number seven on the U.S. Billboard Hot R&B and Hip Hop Songs. Slow Dance, Hey Mr. DJ was another hit on Born Into the 90s album. This was R. Kelly's first number one on the U.S. R&B chart. The album sold over one million copies and is now considered a New Jack Swing classic. This was R. Kelly's only album with public announcement. He went solo and began recording his next album. Music was now evolving. The new Jack Swing sound was beginning to fade away. R&B was becoming more X-rated. We called it baby making music back in the day. R&B singers such as Babyface, Keith Sweat, Luther, Aaron Hall, Boyz II Men, Silk, Teddy Riley, Jodeci, Freddie Jackson were all R. Kelly's competition at the time. Michael Jackson was the number one guy. He had just released the Dangerous album in 91. Dangerous was in the process of selling over 30 million copies worldwide. R. Kelly knew he had to come hard with his next album. And that's exactly what he did. On November 9, 1993, R. Kelly released his debut solo studio album, 12 Play. 12 Play is one of the best R&B albums of all time. The entire album was written and produced by Kelly himself. It peaked at number one on the U.S. top R&B hip-hop albums and went on to top the R&B albums chart for nine weeks straight. Sex Me was the album's first single. It reached number two on the R&B chart and reached number 20 on the top 40 of the Billboard Hot 100. The second single from the album was Bump and Grind. This became R. Kelly's biggest hit at the time. It peaked at number one on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100 and it also spent 12 weeks at number one on the U.S. Hot R&B Songs chart. The single sold over one million copies. His next two singles, your Body's Calling and Summer Bunnies were both hits as well. 12 plays sold over 6 million copies. R. Kelly was now the man. Unfortunately, his mother Joanne didn't get to see her son blow up. Months before 12 Play was released, she died of cancer. That put R. Kelly in a dark place. Although he was depressed, he had to continue working. Aaliyah was born on January 16, 1979 in Brooklyn, New York. She moved to Detroit at an early age. Her mother was a vocalist and she enrolled Aaliyah in voice lessons when she was only seven years old. Aaliyah began singing in the church choir and performing at weddings and charity events. By the time she was 12 years old, she was signed to her uncle's record label, Black Ground Records. Barry Hankerson is Aaliyah's mother brother. He started off as an entertainment lawyer. In 1974, he married singer Gladys Knight. The marriage didn't last long. The two divorced in 1979. Hankerson signed a distribution deal with Jive Records. This is when he introduced Aaliyah to R. Kelly. R. Kelly became Aaliyah's mentor. He written and produced her whole first album. During the making of AJ Nothing But A Number, the two began sleeping together. They began recording the AJ Nothing But A Number album in December of 93 at the Chicago Recording Studio. The album wasn't finished until February of 94. On May 24th of that year, Aaliyah released her debut album, Age Ain't Nothing But A Number. 
the album produced two U.S. Billboard Hot 100 Top 10 singles, Back and Forth and At Your Best. AJ Nothing But A Number was the album's third and final single. The album sold over 6 million copies worldwide. Aaliyah was now a star at the age 15. Her and R. Kelly became real close. The two got married on August 31st, 1994 in Sheraton Getaway Suites in Rosemont, Illinois. R. Kelly was 27 years old at the time. The marriage was later annulled by Aaliyah's parents. She left Jive Records in 1996 and began working with Virginia artists Missy and Timberland. On November 14, 1995, R. Kelly released a self-titled album. It debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 and sold over 5 million copies. The album spawned three number one R&B singles, You Remind Me of Something, Down Low, and I Can't Sleep Baby. R. Kelly was now the biggest R&B singer in the game. The man had a golden touch. That same year, he written and produced Michael Jackson's 13th and final number one U.S. single, You're Not Alone. The single sold over 2 million copies worldwide and received an American Music Award nomination and a Grammy nomination, both for Best Pop Vocal Performance. On November 26, 1996, R. Kelly released I Believe I Can Fly from the Space Jam soundtrack. It peaked at number two on the Billboard Hot 100 and later won three Grammys. I Believe I Can Fly sold over three million copies and ranked number 406 on the Rolling Stones list of the 500 greatest songs of all time. R. Kelly was now on another level. He started his own record label, Rockland Records, and got a distribution deal with Interscope Records. Sparkle was the first artist signed to Rockland Records. Her and R. Kelly been friends since the late 80s. On May 19, 1998, Sparkle released her self-titled debut album. The whole album was produced by R. Kelly. It debuted at number three on the Billboard 200 and sold over 500,000 copies. Be Careful was the album's first single. Five weeks after the song was released, it had been played on the radio in the U.S. over 40 million times. That same summer, R. Kelly helped write and produce Friend of Mine by Kelly Price. R. Kelly and Ron Isley both hopped on the remix and made an instant classic. The song spent five weeks at number one on the U.S. R&B chart and peaked number 12 on the U.S. pop chart. The single sold over 600,000 copies. That same year, on November 10th, R. Kelly released his third solo album, titled R. It peaked at number one on the top R&B hip-hop albums chart and number two on the U.S. Billboard 200. The album sold over 600,000 copies in its first week and later sold over 12 million copies worldwide. The album spawned nine hit singles. R. Kelly was later nominated for three Grammy Awards and won three Soul Train Awards, including the Sammy Davis Jr. Entertainer of the Year Award. It's safe to say that R. Kelly dominated the 90s R&B scene. November 7, 2000, R. Kelly released TP2.com. The album debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 and number one on the top R&B hip hop albums. TP2.com sold over 4 million copies. The album's first single was I Wish. 
I Wish spent three weeks at number one on the U.S. R&B chart and peaked at number 14 on the U.S. Hot 100 chart. A Woman's Threat, The Storm Is Over, Fiesta, and Feeling On Your Booty were the album's other hit singles. Fiesta featuring Jay-Z and Rockland artists Boo and Gotti was a huge hit. The song spent five weeks at number one on the U.S. R&B chart and is ranked by Billboard as the best-selling and most played R&B hip-hop song of 2001. Jay-Z and R. Kelly became good friends. They decided to record an album together. The two began recording the best of both worlds. The album was released on March 19, 2002. It received bad reviews, but still sold over 200,000 copies in its first week. At the time, Jay-Z was the biggest rapper in the game. He had just released the classic hip-hop album, The Blueprint. The Best of Both Worlds went on to sell over 1 million copies worldwide. The album could have been much bigger, but it was leaked months earlier. Plus, around this time, a sex tape of Art Cali and an underage girl began circulating. The R. Kelly sex tape is the biggest sex tape in history. Millions of copies were sold by bootleggers in America. In the video, not only did you see R. Kelly carry on with a minor, there were a few adult scenes as well. Millions of women wanted to see what the king of R&B was talking about. And millions of men wanted to learn a few tricks from Mr. Bump and Grind as well. I remember watching the sex tape back in 2002. I was a teenager at the time. Back then, I didn't think that R. Kelly was doing anything wrong. Growing up in the hood back in the day, you seen older guys dating younger females all the time. And you seen older females dating younger guys. When I was a teenager, a lot of the females my age went after grown men. By the time my boys and I got at them, they were already used and abused. I remember seeing girls in high school get picked up by grown men. R. Kelly was in his 30s sleeping with high school students. On June 6, 2002, he was arrested in Miami and charged on 21 counts of child pornography. During the arrest, the police searched R. Kelly's home in Devonport, Florida and found 12 images of an underage girl on a digital camera. The girl in the images was Barker's niece, who was only 12 years old at the time. R. Kelly was released the next day after posting a $750,000 bail. The charges were later dropped due to lack of probable cause for the search warrant. R. Kelly walked away scot-free from the situation, and his fans stuck with him the whole time. He continued working and began recording his next album. On February 18, 2003, R. Kelly released his fifth studio album, Chocolate Factory. The album debuted at number one on the U.S. Billboard 200, selling over 500,000 copies in its first week. The Chocolate Factory sold over 3 million copies worldwide. R. Kelly's next album, Happy People You Saved Me, was released the following year. The double album sold over 5 million copies worldwide. R. Kelly was still on top. That same year, him and Jay-Z came together once again to record the Unfinished Business album. 
The album was promoted by the Best of Both Worlds tour. It would have been one of the greatest tours in history. The tour began at Allstate Arena in Rosemont on September 29, 2004, and ended a month later. R. Kelly began complaining about Ho's tour crew, and Ho began complaining about Kelly showing up late to shows. One night during the St. Louis show, R. Kelly walked off stage and went to McDonald's to work the drive through window. This caused tension between R. Kelly and Jay Z. Several tour dates were canceled after that. On October 29th of that year, at the Madison Square Garden show, R. Kelly lead the stage once again, claiming that one of Jay-Z boys put a gun out on him while he was performing. R. Kelly runs backstage to inform his entourage. Jay-Z's best friend Tata allegedly walks up the hallway screaming at R. Kelly and his crew. Rapper Cassidy was there that night to perform with R. Kelly. Him and his crew came with pistols. According to Cassidy, he gave R. Kelly and his crew a few pistols to throw down with. R. Kelly and his crew were now prepared for action. As they walked from the backstage area, Tata had allegedly pepper spray R. Kelly. R. Kelly was rushed to the hospital and Tata was arrested. R. Kelly left the tour and him and Jay-Z filed multiple lawsuits against each other. That was the end of Jay-Z and R. Kelly's friendship. On July 5th, 2005, R. Kelly released TP3 Reloaded. The album included a five-part series of the song Trapped in the Closet. It sold over 1 million copies. In 2007, he released his eighth studio album, Double Up, which sold over a million copies as well. R. Kelly continued releasing albums. It's too late. They should have did it 30 years ago. On February 22nd, 2019, the Cook County State's Attorney Office in Illinois charged Cali with 10 counts of aggravated criminal sexual abuse. Our Cali turns himself in and later posts a $1 million bail. In March of that year, during an interview with Gail King, R. Kelly snaps. He stood up and tears pounding on his chest. It was clear that the man was heartbroken. On July 11, 2019, R. Kelly was arrested on federal charges, alleging sex crimes and obstruction of justice by the U.S. Homeland Security investigators and NYPD detectives in Chicago. The next day, the federal prosecutors from New York and Chicago indicted R. Kelly on 18 charges, including child sexual exploitation, child pornography production, sex trafficking, kidnapping, forced labor, racketeering, and obstruction of justice. After a six-week-long trial on September 27, 2021, R. Kelly was found guilty on all nine counts on the verdict sheet. And on June 29th of 2022, he was sentenced to 30 years in prison. It's too late. They should have did it 30 years ago.
R. Kelly was and still is the king of R&B. His catalog speaks for itself. He gave us at least six classic albums and maybe over a hundred classic songs. Like it or not, his music will be here forever. Well, that was the R. Cali story. Thank you all for watching. Stay blessed.